This is now the third enemy that we have heard um, the U.S. is fighting against in just 2024 alone. And this one is called the Houthis. They are an Iran-backed um, militia group, and they have currently attacked. They 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 attacked the U.S. first, so now this is just a retaliation to what the U.S. is uh, fighting now. Let's get into it. U.S. Central Command carried out a second round of strikes against Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. U.S. officials say one of its destroyers pounded a radar site with cruise missiles and that it's in response to... Oh, they, they got me lagging right now. They got me lagging right now. Hold on, man. Hold on. They, they must not want us to talk about this. They must not want us to talk about this. So we're going we gonna to refresh that page and get back into it. U.S. Central Command carried out a second round of strikes against go. Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. U.S. officials say one of its destroyers pounded a radar site with cruise missiles and that it's in response to repeated attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea. These attacks are got to stop. Uh, and we're talking about one of the most important international waterways in the world. Well, it happened after the U.S. and U.K. hit dozens of targets on Friday in the initial wave of strikes against the militant group. The Houthis are now threatening to retaliate. So the U.S. had already striked them earlier this week, sent 60 missiles. They shot over 100, but only 60 hit. And they took out a bunch of camps they took out a bunch of tanks all types of they just sent the militia a militia attack bang they said you're gonna raid our boat we ain't with that here you go take this and if you don't stop we got more for you that's how the u.s came <laughs> The American and British enemies bear full responsibility for their criminal aggression against our Yemeni people. It will not go unpunished or unanswered. The Yemeni armed forces will not hesitate to target threatening sources and all hostile targets on land and sea in order to defend Yemen, its sovereignty and independence. CNN's Oren Lieberman has the latest now from the Pentagon. Oren? Victor and Amara, the U.S. carried out further strikes against Houthi targets in Yemen on Friday night local time, this time targeting radar facilities used by the Houthis. A much smaller set of strikes than what we saw one night previously, where the U.S. led a coalition of countries that targeted nearly 30 Houthi uh, sites across the country with more than 150 precision guided missiles. Those included. There's a lot of war outside. There's a lot of war outside. And if y'all ain't telling me that this don't this ain't saying World War Three, then I don't know what is. Because at this point, like, how do you stop this? How do you stop this? These guys started it. If you want to say that, they could say they could say on their side maybe the U.S. started it. But these guys raided a ship, a U.S. ship, took it over, had guns and everything. Just like they, they flew into uh, the October 7th attack. They flew onto the ship the same way. But this is the Houthis. And they took over the ship. They took over the ship. And now, now the U.S. is retaliating. This is not only the first attack, though. This is the second attack. And it was mostly on radar facilities. So now they've taken out radars, they've taken out military bases, tanks, all these things. And when is it going to stop? It don't look like it's ever going to stop. And you know what's going to happen next week? We're going to hear the interest rates went up. You know why? Because the U.S. is in so much debt and we need more military equipment. You know what that means? 
we need more taxpayer money to fund these military equipments. And it's just sad because at the end of the day, a lot of people are dying. A lot of people are dying. Radar sites, command and control nodes, as well as uh, storage and launch facilities for anti-ship ballistic missiles, anti-ship cruise missiles, as well as drones. Those are the sorts of weapons the Houthis have used to target international shipping lanes in the Red Sea, one of the most critical international waterways in the world. Following that series of strikes, we saw, according to the Pentagon, the Houthis launch an anti-ship ballistic missile into the Gulf of Aden. It didn't hit anything, but following that strike, following that launch from the Houthis, the U.S. carried out this further strike, again targeting a radar facility, so a much smaller set and a much more specific set of strikes. It's unclear at this point if that was specifically in response to the ballistic missile fired or if this was simply a follow-on to the previous evening's strike. A senior Pentagon official had said the U.S. was still conducting a battle damage assessment, so it's certainly possible the U.S. saw what it had been able to destroy and realized there was another target that needed to be hit or destroyed here. The U.S., again, trying to send with these other countries a message of deterrence to the Houthis and a warning. President Joe Biden saying on Friday that if the Houthi attacks on shipping continued, so too would the U.S. strikes on Houthi facilities. Still... Yo, you know what the sad part about this is? That if this was Trump doing this, the entire media would hold him up by the neck and tell them and tell the people that he is a dictator. He is an evil man. He should be prosecuted. He should be put in jail. There's no reason for us to be in wars that have nothing to do with us. Uh, sorry, it does have something to do with us, but there's no reason for us to be in wars that have to be doubt that are thousands of miles away. And they're going to criticize him and, and, and tell him to get out and impeach him. If, if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. But nobody is here talking about what Biden is doing when it comes to all these wars. They're just making the excuses on why we should be in them. Instead of wondering why we're in them and who's calling all these attacks. Like these dudes is dropping missiles and bombs like it's cupcakes. The strikes have tried to be limited in scope, making it clear they're not going after all Houthi infrastructure, just their ability to target international shipping lanes. The question, could they conduct a sort of massive barrage like we saw them do earlier in the week? Senior Pentagon official says he believes from what he has seen that the Houthis would be unable to conduct a barrage of that magnitude based on the U.S. and coalition strikes. Victor and Amara. All right, Oren, thanks so much. Joining us now is CNN military analyst and retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. Colonel, good morning to you. I want to pick up where Oren left off there. How much do we know about how much these strikes have degraded the Houthis' capabilities to continue what they've been doing in the Red Before he says this, I just want to say this, right? At the end of the day, I understand. Sometimes war has to be done. Sometimes you got to put your foot down. Sometimes you don't want to look like the punk. But again, the way we are moving is we are moving as if we need to be in everybody's business, even if it don't have nothing to do with us. It's, it's crazy to me how we can be in two different wars, three different wars, and Honestly, this is just this is just what we're hearing right now. I believe in a couple more months, we're going to hear some other names that are entering this conversation. And then we're going to be hearing about nukes again. We're going to be hearing about that talk. I already heard South Korea is talking. I already heard South Korea is talking. So what do we expect to happen out of all these wars exactly? What is the end result? Let's see. Let's continue. Yeah, good morning, Victor. I, the 
basic answer to that is we don't have a complete picture of that. So we don't know whether or not we have an effective uh, strike. We don't know whether there was uh, any uh, you know, damage to uh, the complete infrastructure that would handle the radars, the uh, SAM sites, the surface terror missile sites that the Houthis have. Uh, we also don't know whether we uh, got after their uh, launch facilities for their drones uh, or any of those, the attendant uh, command and control elements for that. So uh, the short answer is we don't have a complete picture yet, but I think they had enough of a complete picture to do this second st uh, strike, and that uh, was what prompted uh, the action overnight. Yeah. I, between these strikes, after the first but before the second, the Pentagon says that they were able to fire at least one anti-ship ballistic missile, although it missed its target in the Red Sea. I wonder your reaction to hearing that just hours after the first round, this is, is how they, they respond. Yes, yeah, so I think the, the big thing here, Victor, is that they clearly, the Houthis clearly had an ability, and what they were doing was they were showing that they could still strike at shipping in the Red Sea. Uh, the good news uh, for us is that they didn't hit anything. Uh, the bad news is they... So they retaliated. They tried to retaliate, and they missed. So they, they wasted thousands of dollars worth of equipment, military missiles, and they couldn't even hit us. Obviously, the U.S. is probably the most powerful group. We got to be honest here. The U.S. We have the most. We have the most. Uh, we have the most military. We have the biggest military. We have the longest lasting military. We have the strongest military, and we always have a lot of money to back this military. Also. The only thing that is really concerning, obviously, we have the best weapons, too. But the thing that is concerning me the most is how much bombs have to be shot until a nuke is shot. How many more bombs? How many more bombs? Like. How many more bombs? And then when the nukes start hitting, what are we supposed to do? That's what we need to be asking. Not only the U.S., but these people in in the Houthis, like y'all should be asking too. Why are we attacking? Why are we fighting over what territory? In the Red Sea, that's what we're fighting for. They still have the capability, and that's, I think, the real issue here. The capability is still in existence, and uh, it's going to be a long time, I think, before that ability is completely eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, the U.S. says that this is not an escalation. These strikes are actually to avoid escalation from a, a Purely military, uh, militarily uh, perspective. We'll talk about geopolitical with our, our national. How do you expect to not have a retaliation to your retaliation? Their retaliation to a one one ship getting overtaken was to launch two different attacks. One attack with a hundred missiles, and the second attack on radar sites, like. Of course, this is going to cause more drama. This is going to cause more war. And this is going to cause more bombs being thrown. Nobody's going to back down after that. You just took out a bunch of my military. Now I got to take out a bunch of yours. So security um, analyst. and But is this an escalation? <laughs> Well, from a purely tactical standpoint, if you're on the receiving end of something like this, you would probably consider it an escalation if you're a Houthi and you're getting uh, getting hit by these things. You're, you're something that you would uh, talk about that way. And we saw that from the uh, Houthi spokesman uh, that was part of Oren's piece. I, I think one of the key things to keep in mind, Victor, is that uh, their perception is that this is an attack on us. 
uh, being them. This is an attack on their their facilities, their infrastructure, their ability to do what they want to do, their ability to even control their government. And that's how they're seeing this. Whether we see it like that or not, of course, is a completely different issue. We don't see it that way. We see it as a very limited uh, capability, very limited action against uh, their ability to strike at uh, commercial shipping and U.S. Navy shipping in that area. So if the Houthis continue to uh, target the commercial ships passing through the Red Sea, the U.S. has, they have said they will continue. The U.S. said that there will be a continued effort to deter that. What are the options moving forward for the U.S. and the U.K.? Well, the options, yeah, between the U.S. and the U.K. and the other partners uh, in, in this effort, I, I would say the options are basically this, uh, do nothing, uh, which would be unacceptable, or uh, go ahead and continue strikes like this. The magnitude of the strikes may be more like what we saw overnight, where specific installations or one specific installation is targeted, uh, but uh, they are going to leave the options open on the U.S. Has, any, has anybody heard from Biden? What is Biden saying about this? Because Honestly, he's the one calling the shots, right? What is Biden saying about this nonsense? Because we got to talk about this. We can't just let this be swept under the rug like people ain't dying out here. What is he saying? This UK side to do other things, to have more uh, s strikes that are... Uh, of a greater magnitude that can actually take out uh, a larger portion of what they have. And some targets may be restruck uh, because that's going to be something that they're going to have to do as well uh, once they do uh, the battle damage assessment. Man, thank you for breaking that down to us, sir. But it is sad what is going on outside right now. It is very sad. This, this war... This war is not going to end. I know we're trying to figure out who's going to be the next president with this coming year, but like, would you want to be president right now? Would you sit back and actually think about running for president of the United States after all Biden has put us through this year? Not this year, sorry. These last four years. With all the wars, all the interest rates, all the crime going up. Man. It looked like it looked like the US is falling apart. It looks like the US is falling apart. And of course, we still the greatest country ever, but it's looking sad out here for us, boys. It's looking sad out here for us.